Welcome back to Lucas Oil on the Edge. All right, with Tom McGrain right now, last chance qualifying coming up right now. You guys are walking the track. What are you looking for? Ice is getting thin, and we're just looking at the thin spots so we know where they're at of the you know, concrete starting to come through. But I guess they got a couple inches on top of some ice, and it's breaking off, and underneath is a little bit darker, so it looks like concrete. So we're just checking out where our line's got to be for this last chance qualifier to make it into the main event. And you definitely, you know, you want to check where the concrete is, because if you hit that with your screws, it's like hitting ice in your car. So good night, good. tire. Yeah. Yeah. And, and good night yourself. Right. I think he just said good night to Ted. He did, didn't he? <laughs> Needless to say, though, if you do get onto that concrete with the studs and the tires, that thing's going to slide right out from underneath you. This is the LCQ. The top three will advance into the A main. Last chance qualifier. I mean, you got to do it here. You see the starting lineup, and so far, it'll be the largest volume of bikes we have seen in a race. So far, it's been heat races. This is the last chance qualifier. Rope up, hit the throttle, the 450s come to life. Already coming from the second row. How about the 56 bike of Sam Wiggins? That's a good race right there. Following up the tail, one of the lady riders in the group, Megan Powell. And like I said, there's only going to be three of them that's going to make it. And Tom McGrain is the guy that Ted spoke to earlier that was really concerned about the concrete coming through the ice. We saw Wiggins a little bit earlier. Now in third place, he would be the final transfer spot. He was one of the guys that went down earlier in a heat race, and two of them go down like that. Oh, man, and that's 28. 28 bike of Jonathan Reed, part of those two, and then it would be the number 34 of Brad Rosine. And it does not look good there for Jonathan Reed as he lays over the graphs with that right knee. Not sure what happened. Watch it here in replay. The 34, Rosine had to check up just a little bit. Of course, that left no place for Reed to go, except for into the back of him. And it looks like when the bike snapped to the right, it might have gotten his knee. Yeah, man, well, you know, you're not really going all that terribly fast. However, when the impact is that quick, you have no way to react yourself. The result could be a little bit of bodily harm there. That might be the case here for Reed. Well, he might have hurt his leg when he slid into the board as well. Not much working room here, especially when you come off of one of these things. So a tough night for both competitors. They won't make the A here. Very nice of Tom McGrain, who will make the A on the 99A there. Of course, giving Reed a nice little ride there to the side. Needless to say, in some pain here. There are your top three, McGrain, Muller, and Wiggins. Sweet! How about some new ice, baby? All right, well, we're close to the main event, and as the night wears on, the ice wears down. Right here, it's getting very thin, less than an inch of ice. And below that, yeah, that dark is concrete. And if those studs and that tire hit that concrete, it's good night to you, good night to the tires. Pack it up, go home. Time now for the A main. It will be eight laps. So if you're gonna get it done, man, you gotta get it done quick. I gotta say one thing about the riders and about Ted Brunson. When they have spoke about that concrete coming through, I just wonder how hard it is for him to keep from saying, it'll be as slick as ice, man. <laughs> Let's get everybody started. Nine different competitors, three different rows, two of them way in the back. We'll have their work cut out for them to try and get to the front here in just eight laps. Of course, the front row will be stacked up with four competitors. They'll all be handlebar to handlebar. And of course, the 33 of J.R. Schnabel will be on the pole. Here we go. Well, the bright yellow machine of Schnabel with indeed the best starting spot you could possibly have in this short track ice race event here. Kurt Jenny on the 15 in second place. And you go back, it looks like the 11 of Kevin Anderson. We go on board with him, hanging on, and we've got a rider sitting right there in the middle wishing he could move. And look at Schnabel actually turns his head and looks back in his competition. Let's go on board with JR here. Boy, and you can hear the, the gearing on these things as they are immediately maxed out in RPM. Just slam the throttle. You want peak horsepower. It's only going to be there for a couple seconds, so you got to be geared properly. You can almost hear them go right straight to the rev looter, Ken. Here, right there, right on the top of the RPM range. Sounds like it's hitting the rev limiter, but they're only there for just a tenth or two of a second. Great battle, but so far, man, Schnabel has done an excellent job of driving away from these guys. He is on his game. He's got a great setup. Anderson in the 11 tries to play catch up here. And again, with Schnabel out that far and the white flag in the final lap here. 
Absolutely. Just got to hang on two more turns. Nobody even close enough to touch him here tonight. Congratulations to the number 33, J.R. Schnabel out of Campbell Sport, Wisconsin. Oh, nice wheelie right there at the end as he'll pick it up for the fans. That was good riding there. Will he do it again? Oh, he's going to grab that checkered flag. And rightfully so. Fought his way through all the heat races, of course. Didn't have to be bothered with an LCQ. Starts off on the pole and takes it flag to flag. It's just a good run overall. A flawless performance in the final event, in the main event, for J.R. Schnabel. Schnabel and then Chinny in second place. Kevin Anderson rounds out the podium. All right, J.R. Schnabel with uh, yet another victory. That's four in a row for you on the ice. You kick out of here tonight, you go down to Georgia and you race on the flat track outside. Never ends for you, but it probably never gets old, does it? Yeah, it feels good. You know, I, I just wanted to get out there and have a clean race in the main and got a good start. And I knew Kevin was right there and he was going to push me the whole way and uh, end up getting a lot of snow as we were riding and it was getting a little slick. But things went good tonight and uh, we'll hopefully carry all this momentum from this ice series into the uh, dirt track series and get some national wins. Tell you what, I mean, you got that whole shot, you checked out, that was it. It was done. That race goes very fast for the guys behind you trying to catch up, but it's probably a lot slower when you're in front, isn't it? Yeah, and the thing is, you know, it, 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 the race like this, it's high intensity. It's you get out there, you gotta, you gotta put that first lap in and, and just get yourself relaxed a little bit, and by the time you start breathing, the race is over.